everyone. I'm Greg, head of Immunify Security Products. Today is the 14th of August and we are conducting the fourth webinar on Immunify product updates. Firstly, I'm going to tell you about the recent product releases, which were version 4.9 and 4.10. Today I've combined two recent releases. Secondly, I'm going to introduce plans for Immunify 360 version 5 major highlights and key updates. And lastly, as usual, we will have questions and answer section. So I will answer your questions and about everything related to our product. Let's get started with version 4.9. It has been released to production and it's already available for installation. Likely most of you are already using it. Uh, here I'd like to highlight four main changes new file change API support for the real-time scan, CentOS 8 and Cloud Linux 8 support, custom Google recapture key support, bulk operation for IP management, blacklisting, whitelisting, uh, and some other, uh, so let's check them one by one. I'm gonna start with the real-time scan changes. When you enable optimize real-time scan, uh, option in the settings, Immunify 360 switches from iNotify service to either FA Notify or File Change API. Both of them are more efficient than a common iNotify service to watch for file changes. By enabling, enabling this feature, you reduce the load on the file system and make real-time scan quicker and more efficient. Uh, the file change service is available on Cloud Linux OS by default. Uh, it's fast and lightweight, thus, when supported, it's utilized by Unify 360. Otherwise, FA Notify is used. Next one is Google Recapture Custom Key Support. Firstly, why did we decide to implement it? As you know, currently, Recapture Challenge is used in the Unify 360 to block the attackers uh, with gray listed IPs. Thus, humans can pass it, whereas the bots cannot. There are at least two issues with this approach. Uh, Google Recapture could be bypassed by paid anti-bot services. And there is a rate limit of 1 million recapture shows in a free version of recapture. If you exceeded the limit, uh, you will have to switch to the enterprise version of the recapture, which is obviously paid. Uh, in the long run, we are looking for a more effective solution to filter out or block bad bots, which will likely be the custom splash screen or similar approach. We are working on that at the moment, but we also want to keep backward compatibility for those who want to continue using recapture challenge. And thus, uh, if you specify the recapture keys from your Google account, you will continue using it as before. Otherwise you will be switched to the new version automatically. Um, here, I just wanted to point out that it's long-term plan, so it won't happen this quarter. So please check our detailed documentation on how to configure recapture custom keys properly and um, create them in your Google account, enter them, and you will continue using recapture if you need. And one more thing regarding recapture rate limit. We've received several questions and concerns in regards to exceeding 1 million hits on busy servers. I'd like to assure that um, this is not the case. Uh, we are checking the rate limit and see that the numbers of the real recapture shows is significantly less uh, than the number of catch events shown on the dashboard of Immunify 360, which means uh, there will be only one real recapture show for thousands of capture hits. Most hits are caused by simple bots, uh, which cannot render JavaScript, so they are dummy bots. Uh, so the capture is not really shown, uh, but they still cannot pass the challenge. Uh, just to illustrate, we have more than 8 billion capture hits total for Immunify 360 infrastructure, but we are still within the limits of free recapture. So no worries here about exceeding the rate limit. Um, moving on to the next one, bulk IP operations in the UI. We extended the interface, so now you can select a dozen IPs uh, and add them to either blacklist or whitelist at once. 
it's bulk processing of IPs and all group related actions are also available uh, for selected IP addresses. Thus, you shouldn't blacklist IP uh, address one by one. So you can just select 10 of them and uh, apply some action. Uh, what else we have? Um, in addition to the listed items, we, we've implemented Cloud Linux OS 8 support and CentOS 8 support and ability to block uh, standalone malware in the project defense based on the malware scanner output. And also um, the web shield is now available in the standalone installation of Minify 360. Overall, uh, we've implemented 83 tasks and fixed 16 issues. Uh, it was quick overview of version 4.9. Uh, now let's take a look uh, at what we have in version 4.10. Uh, it has been released to beta already and uh, it's partially available as a production release. Uh, currently it's available for, uh, I believe, 8% of all customers and it's still in the gradual rollout process. It will be available for everyone in about a week. We've implemented two noticeable features. One is PHP in Unity and the other is Hooks version 2. Also, uh, we have PAM extension for FTP and small UI improvement there. Uh, so let's check them all. PHP immunity. I, I would call it a revolutionary approach to preventing a malicious PHP code execution based on detected malicious activity. Currently, it provides a protection against malware drops. Uh, essentially, it's an automated proactive defense rules generator working at runtime. It uses data collected from the blamer component and malware scanner correlating those events. Uh, PHP Immunity dynamically enhances proactive defense, stopping malware execution, zero days, uh, and even brand new malware. With PHP Immunity, there's no need to wait until proactive defense rules are updated by analytics team. Uh, proactive defense releases the rules safely and instantly on its own based on the detected flaws and malware. Earlier, we had to collect, analyze, prepare new rules for proactive defense, test them, and then release. That took us a while. Now everything is happening in a minute, and it's done for a particular incident on the server, which results in a minimized uh, false positive rate per rule. And uh, in other words, uh, we've significantly increased the speed of the proactive defense rules generation and the Minify 360 is able to patch vulnerability related to malware drops immediately after the first exploitation. Uh, thus, we prevent reinfection by new uh, malicious software with minimized false positive rate. Initial version covers the case of malware drops based on the flow um, causing that drop. So it's initial version and we are improving it. Uh, we are going to extend the number of supported cases for automated uh, rule generation by PHP Immunity. And we are already working on the collective immunity approach based on the incidents collected from all customer servers. Thus, uh, we could auto-generate proactive defense rules, protecting servers proactively against new infections. As always, we release experimental feature disabled, so please make sure that you enable it um, on your setups just to benefit from this major update of the proactive defense. Next big thing is hooks. Uh, for those who've never used them before, um, just a couple of words. Uh, they are notification and custom handlers that allow receiving asynchronous notification on malware detection. Uh, such as um, scanner start, stop, uh, malware detection, and other events. For example, you can create a shell script and specify it as a handler for the malware detected hook. This script will be launched when the scanner is finished and the malware is detected on the account. Uh, so you could do some further actions such as user notification on the malware detection, count suspend, ticket submission, and so on. Uh, the current version of hooks, let's call them version one, uh, first one, uh, has some downsides. 
It has no UI to configure, doesn't support email notifications, has very limited number of events to catch. Uh, we've improved all those features in version two. A new implementation of hooks has advanced UI to manage all required scenarios of hook usage, yet you can still use the command line interface to configure hooks. Uh, you can register your script handler for different types of malware scans, receive email notifications, and catch the proactive defense blocks. In the future releases, we are going to significantly extend the number of supported events. By the way, if you are missing some, please let us know. We, we could prioritize and add them as soon as possible. Uh, for the next couple of versions, uh, we're going to maintain the first version of Hooks and later we will switch to Hooks version 2 completely. Please try them, let us know what you think. Uh, would be great to get any feedback on Hooks version 2. Another thing I'd like to highlight is a new Immunify PAM extension for FTP. It's available on cPanel for pure FTPD and pro FTPD services and as the rest of PAM extensions, uh, it provides a protection against brute force attacks. So in this case, uh, it will be FTP brute force attack, uh, which is, by the way, very popular. It counts the number of unsuccessful attempts, identify the targets as single or multiple user accounts, and considers the source of the attack, blocking attacker in a more intelligent way than a regular IP-based blocking. It employs a time-proven algorithm uh, that has been used in the SSH PAM extension and other extensions since version 4.6. Uh, this feature is, as usual, experimental, uh, something we've just introduced. Uh, so it should be disabled. To enable it, go to the settings page on the general tab, check FTP brute force attack prevention. So you can see it at the picture. Some noticeable enhancement of the UI is the way you can analyze web application firewall incidents on the incidents tab. Uh, now it can filter incidents not only by abuser IP or event description, but by domain as well. Just type the domain name and you will see all web incidents related to the domain. Uh, we also implemented SE Linux configuration support, introduced new Cloud Linux Backup Utils version 3.5, added support for the multiple account with the same user ID on Plesk setups, and fixed a bug in Immunify Agent related to Agent Restart after update. Overall, uh, we've implemented 117 tasks and fixed 36 issues. Uh, now I want to move on to the third part of webinar and inform you about the changes in the upcoming production version, which will be attention please, version 5.1. Uh, currently uh, the version is in beta and available for testing. It will include two noticeable features. The first one is MDS, which stands for the malware database scanner. Uh, it can automatically scan the user database uh, for malicious injections and safely clean them up. So in case, uh, in this version, it's just a CLI tool without the UI. Further versions will integrate uh, it with malware scanner UI. MDS, malware database scanner, uh, helps and um, helps to find some malicious code injections in database um, MDS help and usage examples uh, can be found at the documentation uh, section of Immunify360 uh, located at docs.immunify360.com. Um, at this moment, this feature is experimental and supports uh, WordPress only databases. Uh, GUI and support of various web applications are in plans for further development. As for now, um, you already can try it and uh, we would appreciate if you will share your experience using the MDS. So if you have any questions uh, how to use that, please first check our documentation uh, at docs.immunify360.com. Then uh, you can always um, 
uh, request assistance from our support team. So we will help to run it, to check your databases. And later we will include it um, in the UI. So you could run it uh, right from the malware scanner. It will be the same UI like for files uh, scan. But uh, we decided to start it right away, uh, start testing of that. So please try it, try to run and find something in your database. Uh, by the way, it can also clean up database uh, and it has a um, special argument to recover uh, previous version before the cleanup so you can easily start scanning, clean up found malware and restore it if you find that for some reason it um, did not clean it up uh, properly. Another major change happened with um, port firewall. So in Unify port firewall, we've received a lot of requests regarding another firewall operational mode that has to block all ports and leave uh, only some specific ports open. As you know, originally in Unify 360 allowed blocking specific ports only. Uh, starting from uh, version 5.1, Immunify uh, 360 allows you to enable the opposite, block everything, but allow uh, listed ports only. You can start using it right away since it already supports all type configurations for cPanel, typical configuration for cPanel, Plesk, Direct Admin. System ports are allowed by default, uh, but you can start um, changing them uh, when you need so you can alter them. It will look very simil uh, similar to what you have in CSF as a port firewall and basically it's very good moment to switch to Unify 360 completely if you are using CSF as port firewall. Um, this feature is experimental as usual uh, at the beginning. Uh, at the moment and it shipped disabled. So to enable block all except specified ports, just go to the firewall and change default blocking mode to block all except specified ports. Um, this is pretty much everything I'd like to talk about. And now on the last slide, I've compiled uh, the list of useful links for you so you can um, use release notes to get more information on releases, uh, see some screenshots, how it looks like. Also, uh, it's direct link to documentation and uh, how you can send feedback on the product. So please use uh, this email feedback at immunify360.com. Anytime you need uh, to figure out something regarding the features. And um, if you have some feedback on existing features, please let us know. And also those are direct links to a help desk uh, and to our blog, uh, which has a lot of useful articles. So that's everything. Thank you for watching. And now it's time for your questions. Okay, the first question is, are you planning to add whitelisting countries? Well, currently you can whitelist countries. Uh, you can go to the firewall settings and add particular uh, code for the country, like a short code for, for that. For example, for China, it will be ECH and uh, you can block the whole country. You should be very careful with that because it's not always like malicious traffic coming from that country. Uh, next question is what happens when we don't enter the Google capture keys? Is it still working? Uh, good question. Yes, it will be um, operational and we're not going to change anything at the moment. So we will keep it for the next couple of releases. As, as it's now, so without any changes. But uh, we would recommend uh, for you, if you want to keep it um, operational as recapture challenge, then it would be great if you put your own custom keys. Uh, otherwise, for the next two, three versions, it will be uh, the default solution uh, as you had um, in the past, like today. 
so nothing will be changed uh, regarding the recapture challenge it will be showing uh, with our existing uh, proprietary keys for recapture okay next question are the experimental optimized real-time scan and php immunity safe to turn on in a production environment or should we wait for further versions it's kind of tricky questions as usual because as far as we can see because firstly we release beta version and we kindly ask people to test all those features on the test servers and after that uh, if we see that those features works properly, uh, then we release production release. <laughs> so I would say yes. So you can enable it and you can start using it right away, but still there might be bugs. So uh, to be honest, um, sometimes it happens and uh, you can instantly turn it off uh, using command line interface it takes seconds to turn it off so uh, for this uh, at least for optimized real-time scan i don't see any reason why you not uh, enable it so uh, because we released it a couple of ver versions ago and it, it has been checked already so i'm really confident about the optimized real-time scan for the php immunity it's new feature well, if you are not sure about the recently released features, then I would recommend to wait one, one more release and turn it on after that. Then uh, for sure you can start using it. And after some times, uh, we just remove that experimental tag and it means that it's been checked by time. So it's reliable now, you can, rely on it you can enable it uh, and start using but you can start using it earlier uh, it's not a problem uh, just enable it on one server see how it works for you and then enable it across all setups you have okay next one are we going to see email related features on the immunify 360 we are not sure if immunify 360 is already scanning mail folder of cpanel users as well during uh, its scheduled scan time need some clarifications okay thank you for question um we don't scan mail folders so we scan mail folders we don't scan mailboxes if uh, some malicious files are placed uh, in the mail folders, we will find them. But uh, we don't scan mbox, so we don't scan um, entire mailbox of users and we don't scan mail traffic. It's not the focus of our product. Uh, we are focused on the malware in files and now, as I told, uh, you, about the MDS, Malware Database Scan. So we uh, introduced it recently and we'd like also to start scanning databases. Uh, so this is the only focus for that. Shortly, we, we, uh, we are scanning mail folders for malicious files there, but we don't scan mailboxes. Do you have plans to improve additional language support like separate file with translation to be included for self-translation uh, we already had that feature for hooks version 2 given that we have email notifications and email templates uh, we provided uh, the way to change them to overwrite existing system files so you can uh, take that template and translate them on your own so your users will receive that um, customized uh, localized files, lo localized emails. Uh, regarding the system language, well, we have it in plan, uh, but currently I, I don't have any ETAs for that because it's not that high priority. The more people re are requesting it, the higher priority is. So if you, uh, think that it's really important for you, please submit a feature request. You can just drop email to 
uh, feedback at minify360.com and we will process it and it will help to prioritize this request. So we will implement it in the future versions. Do you plan to scan outgoing traffic from, from server like malware uh, that is trying to, to some DOS outside network from infected WordPress? Yes, we do have plans regarding that. We see that it's really important. And uh, we are working, we are designing the feature that the component actually that will trace uh, that traffic and uh, it will block it if it's malicious. So at the moment we are designing how to do that, uh, how to make it efficient. And later we will introduce that new feature. So we will start scanning that malicious outgoing traffic. Uh, it will be HTTP and HTTPS traffic. We will do that. Will the upgrade uh, from Immunify 360 version 4.10 to Immunify 360 version 5.1 be easy? Is there maybe an upgrade tool or manual uh, how I can upgrade it? Uh, there will be no changes regarding the upgrade process. So it's not like a brand new version. It's just a next version of the release uh, of the product. So no extra actions uh, will be required for that. So no worries if you have auto update using yum or up get, so it will be updated automatically. Or if you are updating it uh, manually, then you just run the same command to install new version or to upgrade to this new version 5.1. And it will be done automatically without any extra actions required. So no worries regarding that. Um, there were no significant changes in the architecture of the product, which might require any extra steps for the upgrade. So migration will be done automatically. No uh, reason to, to worry about that. Any plans to do outgoing mail spam monitor block? Um, regarding the mail traffic processing, we do have plan. Uh, we are planning to scan. Actually, we have planned to find uh, malicious scripts that is the reason for that traffic. So basically you have something uh, on your server that produce that parasite traffic. So uh, it sends uh, email uh, or bulk of emails. And uh, if you block that script, it will prevent that outgoing traffic, spam traffic. Um, uh, so yeah, we are working on the way to detect uh, those spam scripts. And if we can block them instantly, it will block outgoing uh, mail spam traffic coming from your server. So it's one uh, of the next features we, we've already planned. So it's in the roadmap. And so we will introduce it sometimes later. So uh, not in the next, so not in the upcoming release, but later we will do that for sure. When you are planning to implement centralized management to see incidents across servers, we are planning to implement it in uh, several stages. The first stage will be to implement API that allows you to request information regarding the IP address and incidents happened. So for example, if one IP address uh, got blocked, then you can request information why it happened, what's the root cause for that, uh, which component blocked it. So you can receive that information and use for analysis. Uh, the first version will be, um, I think we are going to release it uh, in one of the next version, either upcoming or the next one uh, after that. So we, we will deliver it soon. And the next versions will support UI for that. So we will um, improve incidents tab. So it will, uh, it will be called IP and incidents lookup. So you could use UI to find those 
incidents and the reason to block particular IP addresses. Uh, also, you could find incidents by username, by IP address, uh, by some other uh, strings. So it will be quite comprehensive uh, API and um, component itself uh, uh, to improve the way you can analyze the reason of blocked IP addresses. So we want to add some transparency into that process and enhance uh, the amount of data shown on the incident step because currently you cannot see some of the incidents because they hap they are happening in the cloud. So we don't expose them uh, to, to customers. Uh, some IP addresses just get blocked uh, by heuristics that are working in the cloud and you don't see those incidents but they, they are happening, uh, they are getting blocked. And uh, when we introduce that new feature, you will see them all. So you will see what's going on in the cloud regarding your uh, server and uh, what happened in the in other part of your system. So you will have that transparency. Will other CMS be added to the malware scan uh, for the database in the future? Yes, sure, we, we want to add them all, uh, all popular. And also uh, we are thinking about implementing just a general approach to scan database. But at the moment we are focused uh, on WordPress database only because uh, it's the majority of databases uh, running on uh, customers' uh, servers. So yeah, we are focused on WordPress, but we, we are thinking about adding more considering their popularity. So for example, the next one will be Drupal or Magenta and then Joomla and other. So we will add uh, all top 10 for sure. And then we will see uh, what, what else we can do with that. So yeah, currently it just WordPress. Uh, and we want to test the solution, the approach uh, against the WordPress databases because it's quite obvious how to clean them and what type of infection we can find there. Uh, and after that, we will enhance the solution. Thank you all for participation. Thank you for your questions and see you at the next webinar. Bye.